ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله تسألون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدع وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد الحمد لله we have entered into the blessed the virtuous and the favored days the first 10 days of Dhul-Hijjah and as Allah mentioned in the Quran Wal-Fajr wa Layalin Ashr wa Shafi wal Watr by the dawn by the 10 nights and here again why it is important for us to follow the understanding and the belief of the sahaba because here Allah mentions by the 10 nights So firstly someone reading this their own interpretation would lead them to believe that it is just 10 nights but according to the narrations of the salaf the narrations of the sahaba they mention Allah is referring to the 10 days of Dhul-Hijjah the blessed 10 days of Dhul-Hijjah And then Allah mentions and by the evening and the odd and again someone reading this will get their own interpretation so again we have to refer back to the sahaba and they mention in the tafsir that the even and the odd is interpreted as the even being the 10th day of Dhul-Hijjah and the odd referring to the ninth of Dhul-Hijjah but nonetheless Allah makes mention of these blessed 10 days in the Quran also Allah mentions that they may witness benefits for themselves and mention the name of Allah on known days And again it refers to the days the first 10 days of Dhul-Hijjah. Another ayat Allah mentions and remember Allah during specific number days. And here the tafsir it is mentioned from the salaf it refers to the days of Tashriq the 13th the 14th the 12th the the 11th the 12th and the 13th of Dhul-Hijjah the days of Tashriq the three days after the 10 days also the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said no good deeds done on other days are superior to those done on these days meaning the first 10 days of Dhul-Hijjah And then some of the companions they asked the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam not even jihad and he replied sallallahu alaihi wasallam not even jihad 
except that of a man who does it by putting himself and his property in danger and does not return without any of those things. And this hadith is found in Sahih Bukhari. So from the virtue and the blessings of these days, we will look at some important points. Because Allah has favored and honored these days above other days. And it is that good deeds are superior in these days as opposed to other days. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Deeds done in these days are superior to deeds done in other days. These deeds done in these days are better than deeds done in other days. And they ask him, even jihad, meaning that if we do jihad outside of these days, and he said, yes, even if you do jihad outside of these days, deeds done in these days are superior, they are better, more virtuous than doing deeds outside of these days, even if you do jihad, except that of a man who spends his wealth and his life fisabilillah and he does not return with any meaning that he dies a martyr. So we understand or we know a little concerning the virtues of doing jihad. But it is better to do good deeds in these days even if you do jihad outside of these days. The salah, the extra, the extra salah, the extra fasting, the extra charity, the extra deeds done in these days are better than deeds done in other days. So the wise one, the one who wants to seek nearness to Allah, he will put his best foot forward and strive hard and be diligent in doing good deeds in these days. Remember that doing a good deed, a righteous deed, a correct deed, it must be done sincerely for Allah and it must be done according to the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And some of the good deeds we have from it, fasting. So we try to fast the first nine days because the tenth day is Eid and you do not fast on the Eid. It is not permissible to fast on Eid, even if you have to make up a fast. Hajj and Umrah are performed in these days. And the Hajj is one of the pillars of Islam. We perform charity in these days. And charity in these days, in these 10 days, are more virtuous and rewarding than charity in any other day. So if you want to find a time to be charitable, these days are the time. We have slaughtering for Allah. We have reciting the Quran. Also from performing good deeds, it is the vicar of Allah. And we have a particular vicar that we make during these days. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. You say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. You make the dhikr of Allah, because it is more virtuous in these days than any other day. Keeping family ties, smiling at your brother, feeding people. And as we are fasting, trying to uphold the fast for these nine days, we break the fast of those who are fasting. 
And as the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever feeds a fasting person will get his reward, that of the fasting person without his reward being diminished. So the one who fasts, he gets his full reward. And the one who breaks the fast of a fasting person, he will get the same reward of that person's fast. And we know from the reward of fasting is that Allah will reward you. That the smell coming out of the breath of a fasting person is more beloved to Allah than the smell of musk. Those who fast, peace be their face will be put at a distance of 70 years from the hellfire. And there are many, many more virtues concerning fasting. So when you feed a fasting person, you get the like reward. So imagine feeding the jama. We have about 30, 40, sometimes 20, sometimes 10. Imagine feeding people. So you feed 10, 20, 30 people, you get the reward of each one of them. May Allah make us those who hold on to the advices and strive upon doing good deeds, seeking his face upon the sunnah. Amen. Also from these days, we have the virtuous and the blessed day of Arafah. Yomul Arafah, the standing of Arafah. And this is the ninth of Dhul Hijjah. This is the day before Eid. And Allah mentions, and by the promised day, and by the witness, and by what is witness. And Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the promised day is the day of resurrection. And the day which is witness is the day of Arafah. And the witness is the day of Friday. And this hadith is reported in at Termidi. Also, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah, Allah frees more slaves in this day than he does in any other day. There is no day in which Allah sets free more slaves from the hellfire than he does on this day, meaning the day of Arafah, which would be next week, Friday, inshallah. Also, we have fasting on the day of Arafah for those not performing Hajj. Again, fasting on Arafah for those not performing Hajj. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked about fasting on Arafah. And he mentioned it expiates the sins of the year gone and the year coming. This is from the virtue and the honor and the favor that Allah has bestowed upon Yawmul Arafah, the ninth of Dhul Hijjah. That when you fast on that day, Allah will expiate the sins of the year gone and the year coming. Also, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the best dua is that on Yawmul Arafah. The best time to make dua, the best of the dua is on Yawmul Arafah. And he mentioned that the best supplication that he and the other prophets made was La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahul mulku wa lahul hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir There is nothing worthy of worship and truth except Allah He is without any partners Unto him is the kingdom and for him is all praises and he has the ability over all things. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said 
that the best dua is the one made on Arafah. And the best dua that he and the other prophets made was saying, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la ahul mulku wa lahul hamd wa huwa ala kuli shayin kodir. So we should try to learn this dua before Yawmul Arafah and put forth fasting on that day and also strive hard brothers to put forth good deeds for these days because deeds, deeds done on these days are better than deeds done in any other day. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu ahul mulku wa lahul hamd wa huwa ala kuli shayin kodim. Alaykum as salam. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala thumma amma ba'd. So again, deeds done on these days are more virtuous than deeds done in any other days. And we have the day of Arafah, which is next week, Friday. Inshallah. Let us try to encourage each other to hold fast on that day. Because fasting on that day, as the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it will expiate the sins of the year gone and the year coming. And the best dua is that made on Yomul Arafah. And the best dua that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the other prophets made was saying, La ilaha illallah wahdahu, la sharika lahu, lahul mulku wa lahul hamd, wa huwa ala kuli shayin kodir. Moving on, looking at some of the aspects concerning Eid and the days of Tashrik. And Eid is the tent of Dhul Hijjah. And without a doubt, the tent of Dhul Hijjah is the best day for the year. And the days of Tashrik is the 11, 12th, and 13th of Dhul Hijjah, the three days after. So we should know concerning this day of Eid, we perform the Eid Salah, the Khutbah, and then we perform the slaughtering. You do not perform the slaughtering before the Eid Salah. You perform the Eid Salah and then you proceed to slaughtering. A man slaughters for his family. A man slaughters for his family. So he has a share for his family. The animal to be slaughtered must be one from the son of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam it must be either a camel that is older than five years old or a cow that is older than two years old or a sheep or a goat that is older than two years old the animals from the cattle Good example here, someone trying to be sincere to Allah, being sincere, but they're slaughtering a chicken. It will not be accepted. You have to slaughter the animals for the Eid al-Adha according to the Sunnah. You have to be sincere to Allah and you have to be upon the Sunnah or else it will be rejected. So then what is the purpose of sending the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Someone could take up a chicken and say I am sincere, but truth. Fi sabilillah. Someone could take up a cockroach or an iguana, a lizard, and slaughter and say look, there is my sacrifice. La, it will be rejected no matter how sincere you claim you are. 
Sincerity is not it alone. You have to be upon the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Moving on. Some things concerning the animal. It must be good for slaughtering. The animal must be free from any ob obvious defects, any visible defects. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there are four animals that cannot be offered as a sacrifice. The one-eyed animal, an animal that only has one eye. You do not offer this animal as a sacrifice for Allah. A sick animal, an animal whose sickness is clearly visible and seen. A disabled animal, and the disability of this animal is clearly visible and seen. And an emaciated animal that has no fat around around its bones so you're going to sacrifice an animal but it's an animal that is it hardly has meat on its body these animals are not to be sacrificed the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned against them also those who intend to offer a sacrifice, they must not clip or cut any of their bodily hair or nails during these 10 days. You must not clip your hair or cut any of your nails during these 10 days. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, if any one of you wishes to offer a sacrifice the sacrifice then he should not remove anything from his hair or nails until he has offered a sacrifice and we make the sacrifice after the Eid Salah and the Khutbah and the sacrifice is made on the 10th of Zul Hijjah or the days of Tashri the 11th the 12th or the 13th of Dhul Hijjah, the days of Tashri. Because the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that the days of Tashri, these are days for eating and drinking and celebrating. So again, brothers, I encourage myself and I encourage you to put forth good deeds in these days. And these days are the best of days and someone might ask and someone already asks which is better the 10 days the 10 nights of Ramadan or these 10 days and as the soul of mention the 10 nights of Ramadan the last 10 nights of Ramadan are more virtuous than any other night but these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, the soul of the mention, and also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that these days are more superior than any other day. Even if you do jihad in other days. So brothers, let us be those who put forth good deeds in these days. Be good to your parents. <clears throat> Be good to your spouses, your husband, your wife. Be good to your children. Be good to your neighbors. Be good to the brothers. Put a smile on your face. Smiling in the face of your brother is a form of charity. Shake your brother's hand. Be forgiven to your brother show mercy and kindness towards each other all these good deeds we have to put forth do not be from those who will be bankrupt and as the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said 
the bank, he asked them, do you know who the bankrupt person is? And they mentioned the bankrupt person is the one who doesn't have a dinar or dirham, meaning money or wealth. And he mentioned the bankrupt person is the one who comes on the day of judgment with good deeds. But then because he oppressed this one and he oppressed that one and he used to backbite this one and he used to slander this one and he was oppressive to the people when he came on the day of judgment with his good deeds the people started to take from his deeds. Do not be like the bankrupt person and put forth good deeds sincerely for Allah. Put forth good deeds according to the sunnah. Learn what the sunnah is and put forth good deeds. Fear Allah and stay away from the evil. Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا ذابنا لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك وكنا الصلاة